per topic, per case, and I would have that nicely laid out. So I had that nicely laid out by the time the exams came around. I mentioned before that I'm a visual learner. So one way that I found was easy for me to be able to memorize cases was to add um, images to my table. So let's say for... Um, let's say carbolic smoke for example which is in contract law there was actually a newspaper article image that is attached to that case so i just put that in there and that helped me remember um um the case <laughs> that helped me remember the case with eu law that was even easier because let's say if the topics were about um Sabina, I think, had to do with um, an airline, so I just put a plane in there, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but just picking elements of the case that you can use as images to help you remember is a really helpful way to memorize the cases, which is what I did. So compiling your case summaries for each topic from the very beginning by the time you get to the end of the GDL. Now, if you end up in a situation where you have to do a reset, all of the same rules apply. If you have covered a number of topics, let's say you have your case summaries and all of that done, just go deeper in depth into every topic, add more case summaries, add on topics if you need to, if you didn't have enough um, topics, do supplementary readings, do your notes and just go over, do the mocks, do multiple past questions over and over again. Look at the marking. Another thing is the marking scheme. So while you're doing the mock exams, once those are released, go over the marking schemes. Look at what the marker wants, what, how they would have answered the question, the order in which they would have answered or the placement in which they would have answered the, that particular question. So go over everything, go deeper in depth. One thing I will bring to your notice is that you also, um, it's an, a cost that I didn't cover in my, in the previous installation to this is, um, Resets. Resets are an extra cost or can be an extra, extra cost. It might not be at every GDL provider, but they're, they're usually around £90. Um, could be a little less, could be a little more, but that is a cost that you need to just um, take into account. And that is £90 per exam or whatever cost it is, I believe it is per exam. So if you find yourself in that situation, be prepared for that cost and just go over all of your information that you've learned, all of the topics, add more topics and add supplementary information, do more past papers. And honestly, it is practice makes perfect or perfect practice makes perfect for the GDO. The more you read, the more you learn, the more you test yourself, the better you be um, for the exams and the better you do at the end of the entire diploma. So that's it, that's that's all I've got for studying. If you have any extra tips, if you have been here, you've done that, please leave them in the comment section. Um, if there's anything that you would like me to cover on studying and acing, if there's any specific questions you have about that, also leave that in the comment section and I will address it in a subsequent video. Now I want to move on to gaining legal experience during the GDL. So gaining legal experience is something that you will have to do or you should be doing anyway, um, whether or not you're doing the GDL if you actually want a career in law. So while doing the GDL, there's quite a number of ways that you can gain legal experience. Again, the GDL is a very tedious and challenging diploma. So doing this as well um, while doing the GDL is going to be a challenge and that's where the time management or your time management skills really need to kick in. Um, and one thing about studying the GDL is that because there's so many other elements that you need to be considering, i.e. ways to gain legal experience, doing pupillage applications and all of your other commitments, if you work for example, all of those things are what make this entire year very challenging because you're being pulled in so many different directions um, while trying to study. So it is, yeah, I have no words. It is quite challenging and you have to do the best to bring balance to your life as much as you can. Um, and that will be a task for you to undertake personally. Make sure that you have a great support system to do that. Um, make sure that you are being very disciplined with your with, with yourself and very honest and very 
almost very ruthless with yourself in that you are you are allotting time for what time needs to be allotted for and completing tasks when they need to be because that will help you just be balanced. Um, I'm not saying that you should definitely just not throw yourself into the GDL and everything and just forget that you're an actual human being. That is not going to help you because you're going to be burnt out even before the actual exams start. And remember that everything, your entire diploma is weighted entirely on the exams. So you do not want to be in a situation where the exams that carry your entire diploma have not even happened, but you're burnt out. It's not a good place to be. So make sure that you are trying to balance all of these things out as you go along, but you're being um, disciplined about it and you're being honest with yourself about where you need to kind of pick up your slack, where you need to balance yourself. And um, yeah, you're, this, this part of your life is really going to call for you to be a wholesome <laughs> and responsible human being because this is something that you want so you're responsible in every way and solely for this dream of yours alone so make sure that you are acting responsibly um in it so back to legal experience you will be gaining this legal experience while you're doing this very intense gdl i'll talk to through all of the uh, four or five ways that you can do that and um why you're doing that coherently so if you're going to be making um, pupillage applications then on those applications you want to be able to say that you have done this that and the other and this is the area of law that um, entices you that excites you that you're passionate about this is what you've done so you know that this is what you don't want to do and all of that it's just basically like applying for any job um, you want your resume to be looking on point you want your resume to be impressive and that is the same with the um the, with pupillage applications if you want chambers to accept you as a pupil if you are serious about going down the path of advocacy and litigation then you want your cv you want your life you want your pursuits to impress the people to whom you are submitting your application so the first way that you can gain legal experience while you're doing the gdl is called mini pupillages so basically what you're doing um depending on how long the chambers accept you for it can be anywhere from three days to maybe two weeks so over that period of time you are shadowing a barrister um at specific points in the day, um, through chambers, in chambers, outside of chambers, those are arrangements that are made um, between you and the chambers and between you and the barristers chosen. But basically, you just get to shadow um, a barrister for a couple of days and you get to see what they're doing. You get to help them out with a few things. Obviously, a lot of um, litigation and all of that stuff is confidential but you basically get an insight into what it is to be a barrister and how they work how they move um i know one myth about many people just is that you automatically get to go to court it does not necessarily mean that like there's no set way in which many people just are run you are shadowing real people real barristers that have things to do so you will get an insight into their very real experience there's not a set um template for what uh, many people just are or need to be actually so many people just easy way to get legal experience um, you need to apply to chambers for many pupillages so that all of them have different deadlines different timelines for those so you need to check with specific chambers and sets um, when they are available to actually take on students for many pupillages um, and yeah it's really that simple right now not everyone is working out of chambers so I think there is a pause on those, but definitely reach out to Chambers, look on their websites, they will have all of that information on there. Um, it is my belief that many pupillages and all of these things that we do uh, with close contact will resume, obviously with new principles and new practices of social distancing, but I don't think many pupillages are going to be erased from the picture entirely. So just look them up, um, have an idea of when the deadlines for those applications are so that you can apply. Um, even if you haven't started the GDL program, just apply, um, put the application in and 
it will give you a sense of what they require from you in the application, how the application procedure works, and um, just what to expect in general. So many people are just nice and easy, but they're quite competitive. So you want to you want to make sure that you get your um, applications in in a timely manner. The second way you can gain um, legal experience is by doing pro bono work. So when you start your GDL year, usually your GDL provider will give you a list of all of the pro bono schemes to which the university is signed on to, all of its pro bono partners, all of the avenues and opportunities for pro bono. So, so pro bono is basically undertaking um, legal work without any charge to the client. So there are a number of pro bono um, centers, a number of pro bono schemes across um, England that you can engage in and your school will definitely be the resource for that kind of pointing you which direction you should go. Um, there are a lot of advice centers. Um, there is the Blackfriars Settlement Advice Center. We have Pro Bono Community, which um, I actually trained with. What you go, what you do with them is that you go through a training for I think over the period of two weeks, and then they place you in the different advice centers um, all over London that you can work um, with. There is also um, there are immigration and asylum um, pro bono schemes. There's one. There's ones for gender based violence. Um, there's an array of opportunities to carry out pro bono. There's a free representation unit. Um, with that, you get a lot more practice um, because you are actually representing clients at tribunals, employment tribunals. Um, so with some of these, you have to apply. With others, you don't have to apply, but you do have to submit your name. There might be an interview. There might be an application. With free representation units, let me speak specifically about that, you do need to apply, and it's quite competitive. There's a lot of people um, always joining, and their deadlines are very specific. Um, so I think the deadlines might be in the summer. You need to check, just check the free representation unit, and you don't get... Um, to apply again till the next round. So you might want to check with the different pro bono schemes, um, the pro bono um, opportunities that the, your schools make available to you. But don't worry about those. That information will be given to you um, straight off the bat. But you can literally just Google pro bono England, pro bono Wales, and all of the advice centers and um, institutions or entities that offer that or are looking for people to help them in that legal area, you can reach out to them and get to working. Um, it's really great experience. You get trained, your interpersonal skills get trained, your communication skills get trained. You also get, depending on what you do, you might get the opportunity to work with um, vulnerable people and marginalized people in society. Um, which for me personally was great um, because I hadn't had any of that kind of interaction or experience before. So learning how to communicate differently, um, it brought perspective, it brought a perspective of empathy to the profession as well. Um, and so definitely pro bono is a great and easy way um, to gain legal experience and to gain legal insight. Um, into the path that you're actually undertaking, what real life people are going through, what real life people are experiencing, what real life people need legal advice for um, is what you will be dealing with. And it's completely up to you how much time you also commit to pro bono as well. Um, I committed to a day a week for the course of my GDL. You can commit to more, you can commit to less even, um, you can commit to specific hours per week, it's entirely up to you. Um, but I found that that's what worked best for my schedule um, with how fully jam-packed classes were during the week. My one day off, um, which was usually on Mondays, sometimes you get a day off during the week, sometimes you don't. Um, it depends on the institution, but we consistently had a day off per week. I used that day for pro bono because all the other days I was in class or in chambers evenings or somewhere running around doing something else. So it's entirely up to you how much time you commit to that, the period of time you commit to that. Um, but obviously with each um, NCO institution that you sign up with, you will have an understanding with them and that's completely between you and them. You get to decide what that is and that's that. <laughs> Another way to gain legal experience, um, but this is 
much for before the GDL or after the GDL before the BPTC are um, internship schemes and vacation schemes. So with that, um, you will be provided information usually from target jobs. So you can look at target jobs right now and then go into the legal aspect of their website and they will list for you all of the vacation schemes with different um, sets. So chambers, different chambers, and firm law firms as well. So if you are uh, anybody by chance thinking of taking the solicitor route um, and you're not sure, you can actually just apply for internship schemes or vacation schemes um, at law firms in the UK as well. So going to target jobs, just looking up internship schemes, um, vacation schemes, you can also go to specific websites of the law firms and um, of sets of chambers as well, just to see if they're offering any of those um, avenues for learning um, in the summer, whether they're paid or unpaid, um, would depend on the um, set or the law firm. But great way to gain legal experience, you get signed on for about three months. Um, so it's usually through the summer, they are vacation schemes, so usually through the summer. So you would either be doing this before the GDL or after before you start the BPTC, which starts in September as well. So great and easy way to get immersed um, into the legal field. Another way to gain um, more experience is by going to court, like just actually just going to court to see um, how criminal procedure is carried out, to see how civil litigation procedure is carried out, to hear cases out, to see um, witnesses speaking, to see the judge meting out judgments, to see the judge questioning counsel, um, to witness examinations in chief, to witness cross-examinations, um, seeing how barristers conduct themselves, their posture, their language, the way they speak, the way they communicate their cases. There's actually nothing better than that actually. Um, I got during my GDL year and you might have this opportunity as well, not promised, but I did get some of my professors invite us to actually watch them in action, which was pretty, pretty amazing, pretty cool <laughs> at that stage for me. Um, you get a real taste of what it is to be in court literally all day. Examinations in chief can take anywhere from, can really just take any any length of time, so can cross. Um, you get to see real people because, and it's a good way not to become detached from the reality of practicing. Sometimes you get your head so stuck in the books that you forget that you will actually be dealing with human beings, with real emotions, with real stories, with real experiences, and you will either be defending them or potentially at their throats. <laughs> Um, but it puts things in perspective, it puts your dreams in perspective, it puts whether this is actually for you or not in perspective, especially if you want to be an adv advocate. So going to court is a great way to gain that perspective and to gain that experience. Again, the current situation has adjusted how, um, or the, the opportunities, it has adjusted the opportunities to actually do that. But I'm hoping as we, um, transition into our new normal, this is something that we'll be able to do. Um, the general public can still go to courts, um, Royal Courts of Justice, Magistrate Courts, Crown Courts, um, hopefully they will be open to the public to, be able to go and view um, live cases. Currently, a lot of trials are being tested and being carried out on um, online platforms like Zoom. It would be cool to see if the public um, are actually ever given access to to kind of just watch those trials. Um, I think that would be great too because we are moving into a very virtual age and it would be great if students and the public could actually not tune in to be able to speak, but to be able to watch and see what mannerisms look like when a virtual jury is, um, sorry, a virtual trial is being carried out, mannerisms of the barristers, mannerisms of the judge, mannerisms of the witnesses. Um, it will be interesting to study. And honestly, if that's where we're going, we as lawyers will need that practice as well. So it'll be interesting to see if that's something that happens trials become live trials, Zoom trials become open to the public to access or to just watch. Um, 
So that's another way to gain legal experience. The last way I would say is not so much experience, but exposure are chamber evenings. So getting legal exposure, um, chambers evenings and in events. So chambers evenings, you will be going to during your GDL year. So what they are, are just open evenings where chambers open up their doors to students and to um, all those who have legal interests, but mainly to students, but because these emails or the invites are sent out specifically to GDL providers. They open up their doors to you for an evening, usually from 6.30 to like 8.39. Um, there's usually a panel of some sort covering a topic, either um, pupillage applications, how to attain um, tenancy, something interesting, something relevant to your study and to the path that you're taking. There's usually nice wine, there's some finger food, there's water, there's also orange juice usually, and you get to listen to the panel, you get to ask some questions, and then the rest of the evening is purely for networking with the barristers of the chambers, which is fantastic because you get to hear a lot of barristers tell you that they started their legal journey exactly where you're studying um, yours. That a couple of decades ago, they were also trying to figure out how to get a pupillage, or they even tell you about how the pupillage system differed in their day to now. And you get to see so many different barristers in so many fields from varying backgrounds, just fully well accomplished, very proud, very happy of where they are, um, sometimes partaking in some of the most interesting cases that are making the newspapers um, at that time. So you get to interact with them very much like no, they're not going to, it's a very normal conversation. It's almost like any other networking event where you get to ask questions, you get to try to make an impression, but it's not Chambers evenings are not really the moment to kind of stamp yourself. So don't go there being nervous, trying to be so remembered um, or with any kind of agenda, but go there to just listen, to ask your questions and to interact with masters, with QCs, um, Queen's Council, with the judges. And even with pupil barristers, sometimes there will be pupil barristers there to tell you what their experience of pupillage has been so far. So interact with them, speak to them, ask your questions, and that way you can gain some exposure, you can gain some perspective again on what the journey looks like and what to be looking out for. There will be advice on all of the things that sometimes don't get told to you um, on the websites of chambers for example. So chambers evenings are great, inns events are great as well. Some of those are being um, carried out online now. So I advise that you just look up all the inns. I will be covering all of the inns in the next video, the next installment of this series when I talk about the BPTC. But just for noting down now, there are four inns, Inner Temple, Lincoln's Inn, Gray's Inn, and Middle Temple. So you can go on their websites and just look up what events they're having for students or for the public now. There were usually GDL evenings, for example, which we could attend when we were new GDL students, but there are similar events happening. There's similar webinars happening. Also, again, go on Chamber's website, see how they're keeping in touch um, with the public and just join all of those seminars, join all, all of those um, webinars, sorry, I should have said, webinars online, those events. Um, I know some chambers are having like pupillage day um, online through Zoom links. A great way to um, find that information as well, aside from their website is LinkedIn. So connect to chambers, connect to um, ins on LinkedIn so that when announcements for online events come out, you are plugged in. Usually some of these still have a limited number because it's online doesn't mean it's open access to everyone and unlimited. Some of them still have limited numbers. So it's a first come, it's it's done on a first come, first serve basis. So make sure that you're just on the lookout for these events. Um, you can also message chambers, email chambers, ask them how you can be of help, how you can be of assistance, what kind of legal research, what kind of legal knowledge you can attain from them, how you can gain some experience um, from them in this time of lockdown and social distancing. Um, just approach them as openly and as honestly as you can. And yeah, there's nothing more to say with that. Do all you can to gain all of the perspective, exposure and experience that you can. But those are 
all of the main ways that um, I know from my experience um, to gain some legal experience while you're doing the TDL. So a lot of this you will be doing while you're doing the TDL with the exception of the internship schemes and the vacation schemes, everything else you can do while you're doing the TDL. And these are the kinds of things that can take up your time and your energy, but you kind of need all of it so that you can be the full package um, as you go further into this journey. So these are all experiences that are great to attain. These are all perspectives and exposure that are great to attain um, as you progress through the BPTC, as you progress um, to pupillage and to tenancy. You want to have this level of exposure. Um, you want to have tried all of these different things. Um, and they usually end up just teaching you a lot more about yourself, teaching you a lot more about the skills that you need to improve on, things you need to be paying attention to, perspectives that you would have never had if you just sat in the classroom. So starting this in the GDL year and then carrying on through the BPTC um, will be helpful to you in the long run. So these are all... Yeah, these are all the ways I think you can gain legal experience, especially starting at the GDL stage. Um, and this is all I have for you for this video on legal experience and on studying and acing the GDL exam. Please, if you have not watched all, all the other videos, please do catch up on those. You don't know what I may have missed in this video that I've already said in the previous video, um, but I do hope I haven't missed anything. Again, if there's something that you would like for me to cover, please just let me know in the comment section below and I'll catch you in the next installment of this series. Do subscribe, turn on your notification bell so that when the next video is up, you know immediately. But do take care of yourself. I will catch you in the next video. Goodbye.